you're walking down the hallway and you hear someone talking in a room, but they're often be very quiet, but often sometimes in another language, French or German or something. Mm -hmm. And just the idea of like overhearing a quietly spoken French conversation was so neat in that game that we tried to have people talking in other languages and you know, like that, mm -hmm. like Croupier and the um, Le numero gagnant, the we drop cut, rouge, derrepas, 34, you red. Know, some people say you should always walk away from the table when you're on a winning streak. Oh, yes, but I'm feeling extra lucky tonight. Go ahead. Mesdames et Messieurs, faites vos jeux, s'il vous plaît. Ladies and gentlemen, please place your beds. I think I need to get something from her, too. So these are like scenes are from the pr production of the game in a way where Leslie would come to me like, look what I made. I made a chart of every single scene in the game plus every single actor and I coded it. Yellow means Manny's in it and blue means this has prop is in it. And she's so excited about these things that she did. And this character is doing the exact, exact thing. <laughs> yep. You have to take things from your life and put them in your work, you know. Even though they don't read anything to anybody else. Otherwise, well, that, that just so means work will be about life rather than life being about work, right? Exactly. Exactly. Evening, Lupe. Hi, Manny. Okay, back to work. Okay. Oh. I thought I had to, uh, to get something from her, like a card. Maybe that's later. But for now, what I believe I need to do is I need to drink the... Who's it? The, the bottle and get strip search so I can get the metal detector and then I take the metal detector to the corner. Um, I think we're going to come up to Garv's set that Spoilers. I destroyed that that I destroyed two weeks of Garv's work um, <laughs> by trying to learn how to 3D model and somehow I ended up erasing two weeks of his work because it was the, the fish place that, that you had to redo. Oh yeah, the elevator. Yeah, the elevator and that, that place with the fish. Actually, I'll take the uh, elevator. No, I changed my mind. I think the, it's easier to go this way. Nope, Manny, no. Nope. Oh, okay. I didn't know he could get over those stairs. Solid gold flakes. Well, maybe just a sip. Ah. I wonder if there is a liqueur out there filled with solid gold flakes. Probably. It's like one of those obscene things. Thousand dollars a bottle. Sir, if Don't you will, idiot. please kind of place hard. all of your belongings on the security desk. You sure you're not packing anything else? Nothing that would set off that thing. Then, sir, I'm afraid you'll have to step into the back with me. Rules are rules. <laughs> and of course, with my dad being in the military, we moved around a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember this one town we moved to when I was in the first grade. Oh, really? Yeah, the only industry in the area was figs. Acres and acres of fig trees everywhere you looked. Hey, Carla, that's an awfully nice metal detector you have. <laughs> Did you just come back here to ask to borrow my metal detector? <laughs> no way. Oh, okay. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. So the only industry in town was figs. Acres and acres of fig trees everywhere you looked. I myself never really cared for figs. I always like dates more. No, no, me neither. Or prunes. Don't you Actually, just love prunes? Actually, figs are a prunes? personal favorite. They have such a great <laughs> texture. They They're all wrinkled up like my mm, grandma eggs. Hedwig's face. Oh, <laughs> poor grandma Hedwig. Never a big fan of prunes. She was always forgetting things. Hedwig, now that's an interesting name. I remember one time back when Speaking I was six. Speaking of metal six, detectors, 
Are you sure you didn't just come back here for this metal detector? Actually, I did come back here just for your metal detector. What is it with you in this thing? I'm sick of it, Manny. If this is all you want, you can fight the cats for it. Why is it all men are after the same thing? Except you. The only woman you care about is that Colomar dame, and she split on you. I don't know what she did to you, but you know what? I'm done trying to figure it out, pal. Carla. You wouldn't happen to have a second metal detector <laughs> around here, would you? <laughs> Bye, Carla. Drop dead! He already is dead. But I guess that's probably the joke. It's this way, I think. It out. My scythe. I like to keep it next to where my heart used to be. Aha! A little stinky, but it could be worse. All right, there we go. Task number one complete. Like, I remember what... Uh, I seem to remember, at least for now, I'm sure I forget later, what you have to do. I just remember why you have to do it. Like, what you get for doing it. Like, I know, at least I'm pretty sure, that I have to give the metal detector to that uh, uh, coroner guy, but I can't remember what I get for doing it. Oops. Next beach I see, I'm finding me a watch. Would a metal detector help the cause? Hey, just like downtown. You never know what this'll turn up. An engraved ring, a belt buckle with somebody's name on it. <laughs> Who would wear a belt buckle with the... Hmm. <laughs> oh. I can't remember. How was the lighting handled on the characters in each environment? Anybody remember that? I think, uh, however, we were able to set up a couple of lights. I think that was that yeah, was it. I mean, there wasn't there some information that that you guys would take the set because then we have to save a copy of of our sets with like, you know, the key light and the and the fill or or just we I thought we would save a version of the, the very simple. That's possible. Yeah, as as a, like a starting starting place but i mean it was all very kind of rudimentary and you had to be really strategic with yeah. you know what's the what is the best use of uh, a minimal amount of lights to accommodate the character in the entire scene that he's got to be in yeah there was no i mean for all this stuff there was no roadmap or procedure for like oh this is how you do 3d forests or light character i mean we had to make everything up and solve every problem to get everything to happen pretty much in this. Um, so there's a lot of just on the fly, different people figuring stuff out per scene, how to, how to make something work. And as a result, some things work better than others. Wait, you're good. Um, I'm trying to remember what the hell you do. 
With the military, I think you put something in the body, but what? What do you put in the body? These are great, great questions we all must contend with in our day. Ah, yes, I remember the blue casket. Oh, and, oh, and I'm sorry, Garv, this is the, the yeah. set that you had to build this twice. This is Garv's, right? Yeah, this yeah. is the one. <laughs> this was the gift that kept and on giving. And it's actually very beautiful, I might add. Yes. Well, a second time is... Two kind. Yeah, the second time. I <laughs> but I'm, I'm sorry, you, you were saying that that was a real building. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where? Was that in Spain? Uh, that I think it's in Paris, I think. Oh. And I remember seeing a photo of it and being oh. like, wait, There's Peter. Uh, no, uh, good artist <laughs> borrow, great artist steal. <laughs> Uh oh, please. Okay. Hi, what's your name? <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Don't you see? When the government fades away, so will our troubles. Ah, nonsense. We will always need some armed force to fight off the return of capitalism. That sort of fascist thinking is as dead as you are, comrade. When we get rid of all the guns, that's when people will begin to self-police. And the public opinion alone will keep them from committing crimes. Hola, trust funders. Hey, look who's making the scene. It's Manny Calavera, the up, the down, the backside of the nouveau riche. Be it, dinner jacket. We're talking about things you wouldn't understand, like truth and beauty. Hmm. I remember, uh, I used to be, uh, part of the, the Communist Party. Um, and I think I was when I was doing the Let's Play this game. And I, I just remember thinking, like, wow, oh, there's police car outside me. They're coming to get me. Anyway, I just remember thinking, like, how, like, wow, that's so accurate to what the conversations, like, the intellectual conversations, you know, quote-unquote, we really like. That is hardly satire. Hi, what's your name? Lola? <clears throat> what are you doing here? This crowd doesn't go much for souvenir pictures, except maybe of Lenin. <laughs> Manny, I'm on a stakeout. I'm gonna prove to Maximino once and for all that Olivia's no good for him. Still hung up on Max, eh? Take my advice, Angel. Forget about him. He's a gambling racketeer. <laughs> like you. Oh, that hurts, baby. Hey, shh! Here they come. Come on, sugar. How about a kiss for the road? Oh, ick. Don't let me down, Nick. You're a lawyer. You're not supposed to have feelings. I don't, but I know a good tart when I see one. Hey! If Maximino sees that, we're going to end up in matching terracotta pots. Don't be silly. He wouldn't hurt me. He loves me. Uh... Manny, at last we're alone. <clears throat> Tell me, how are the bourgeoisie? Fine. How's Max? Oh my god, she's freaking out. Don't start. What are you doing with a snake like Nick? I'd lay it on you, Manny, but uh, I don't think you'd get it. Messing around with your boyfriend's lawyer is pretty dangerous. Oh, maybe I was wrong. You do get it. I'm a little worried about Lola. That's because she's doomed, Manny. She fell in love with Maximino. That's the one mistake I never made. Do you think Nick would hurt her? Only if he finds her, and take it from me. He's not good at finding things. Open mic night seems like a big hit. It always takes those timid souls a while to get up the nerve. Maybe it would help if you went up there and started things rolling. Oh, Manny, read poetry in my own club? That would be like this whole place was just a big temple set up to worship me. Oh, come. Okay. A lie. <laughs> we slept. Life's just, just some, some rapid, rapid eye movement. movement. In a warm, cozy 
bed. Buried. We wake. The flesh dream is over, Daddy. Now that we're all crazy dead. That was great. <laughs> yeah, but that's the last one. Hey, how about another poem? Okay. Ashes to ashes. <laughs> to ashes. To ashes. To ashes. To ashes. To ashes. To ashes. To me. To ashes. To ashes. To ashes. To ashes. That's pretty genius. I gotta say. That was great. Yeah, but that's the last one. A little dark in here, don't you think? Dark and cold, like the hearts of men. Uh... You know, I'm thinking of buying this place. Really? I thought about buying yours for a while. But then I just decided to ask my boyfriend, Max, to buy it for me. You can have it. I'm leaving town. Manny, you sound so exciting all of a sudden. Why are you leaving town? Chasing a woman I met once and can't forget. Well, I have a poem I wrote just for you. Pay attention because it's pretty short. Here it goes. Ch uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, catch you later, hip chick. Keep practicing that lingo, man. You'll get it. Hmm. Just the dab will drop you. Hey, man, you didn't see me put the secret ingredient in these coffin shooters, did you? Relax. Olivia stole the recipe from me in the first place. Yeah. She steals from the rich and gives to me to pour. In the final version of the game, are the backgrounds actually just pre-rendered flats? Yes, they are. See, that's that's yeah. amazing to me because you know we live in the world of 3D now. We're used to floating the camera around inside of these things, but you know, once you chose your camera angle to pre-render something, that was it. There you go. No, it's it's Manny walking around in a blank 3D room with Z depth uh, data to clip him in front of the um, the stuff that he needs to clip in front of. Not to sound like a capitalist oppressor, but I have people who do that for me now. Not portable. I don't really need a bunch of cleaning supplies. There's something here I need, I think. I'm not gonna drink dirty hookah water, and I can't carry it with my bare hands. Ah, Marillo de Oro. A very I don't really wanna do that. of dirty plates and I'm not going to clean them. Hmm. Not portable. I thought you picked up this crazy thing, but I guess it's not. That was weird. go in? You don't want to go in there. I haven't cleaned up yet. Hmm. All those things are gone now. And then, for some reason, I was always really interested in beatniks. <clears throat> beatniks and reds. I think because it was so foreign to me, like the, um, the red scare was not part of mm -hmm. my actual life, but it always seemed like 
this thing is, it's hard, it's funny, it was always funny to me to imagine how passionate people were about that, how big oh, of yeah. a deal it was for them. And it was always so, but if, if, if from a safe distance, it was just kind of entertaining. Like, oh wow, people are like, we're really concerned about uh, communists everywhere and unions and. No, I, I remember there were, when I was a little kid, there were people would t still talk about communist plots in all seriousness, yeah. Definitely should give a huge shout out to to Peter Chan and yeah, I'm still jealous of that guy. Chan the man. I know. Just when when those packages would come, it would just be like Christmas, and you you'd open yeah you'd you'd see those and and you just think, oh man, and he's a nice guy too. You know. The, the weird thing about family. that was mm -hmm. I never experienced like the delivery of the package oh. firsthand, but I still got excited about yeah. it. No, they're beautiful, and he's such a such a sweetheart. How's a regular guy with three roulette tables supposed to compete with that? What? To some extent, uh, Grim Fandango is a bit of a, of a mutt. It's got pieces of Jedi Knight, it's got pieces of uh, scum, it's got pieces of uh, outlaws, it's got pieces of, you know, it's got iMuse coming in, mm -hmm. and it's got the Lua language. So it was a game kind of made on a shoot, you know, for all the technical challenges in it, a lot of pieces were sort of pre existing, and kind of it was a matter of maybe a new, new era of game development where you don't write everything from scratch, but you kind of put it together in the best possible way. Well, and one of the the kind of the, the side effects of that was since um, we had pretty robust solutions to video playback and rendering and, and art pipes in front of us, uh, it really, you know, a lot of the effort, aside from just making everything, all the blocking and tackling working, was spent in on how to make making games like this convenient and producible and artist friendly and, uh, um, you know, you you had built some tools that were uh, really, un unlike the things that appeared in Render Droid or, or Smush or some of the technologies yeah. it was built on. So it's a bit of a mutt in that we borrowed a bunch of really great technology, um, but there's also a lot of really innovative stuff. There you go. Going in. And uh, so that guy, Toto Santos, which is the name of All Souls Day, he w that was one important casting thing that meant so much at the time. And um, I love the usual suspects. Yes. And there's a, a burn victim at the very beginning of the game, a guy who's burned on the on the ship. Right. And he's in the he's in the bed. He's the first guy who says, "Guys, are so safe." Guy, right. He's this uh, Hungarian or Polish. Yeah, guy. yeah. And we got that actor to do Toto Santos' voice because I was like, I want him to sound like that guy from A Usual Suspects. And so if you listen to him, you just, awesome. like, I just, I wanted to have him say, I just, just <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it hurts. And uh, so that guy, like Puerto Santos. <laughs> and uh, nope. so that guy. There we go. One thing, uh, for a sound designer, or for a composer, when the story is great, and the writing is great, and the pacing uh, is great, whether it's a film or a game, uh, you can't help but, but uh, weigh in in a, in a successful way yourself, because th there's this flow already, and you're just participating with it and enhancing it. Uh, one of the jobs of a composer, especially in, in, a, in a game like this, a lot of time passes, and you need to both entertain the listener and provide musical interest, but it has to also last for a very long time without being tiresome. And uh, I think Pete did a great job at 
striking a balance between a great deal of musical interest, but also kind of hanging back and, and taking its time and letting the story unfold, letting the player concentrate on the game. Looks like it hurts. Hola, Toro. ¿Cómo estás? Not now, Manny. I'm in the middle of something with Naranja here. I doubt I'll be touching that any time soon. I really doubt I'll be a lot of stains for a guy with no bodily fluids. Strong stuff. That ought to kill the pain. Should, but it don't. I killed the pain. No, no, no. I can take it. Bring it on, pops. I'll pop you, sir, boy. Strong stuff. That ought to kill the pain. Hello, operator? Yeah, it's me, baby. How'd you know? Hey, don't say that, sweetheart. You know I meant to stop by and... <laughs> I'm more happy about leaving town every minute. We do. Yeah, they're all like grouped together. They're standing like just the right spot to activate it. Oh. I love how all the characters have very distinct voices that match their personality and their look. Like how much would Tim give you direction and how much was your direction um, influencing? Well, like ideally, when you go through the process, you um, you know you have character pictures along with the audition copy, and and we would send that out to the various agencies, and um, the auditions would come back. And um, I mean, it, it kind of the process kind of does that for you because you're you're listening to the auditions and you're looking at the picture, and you narrow it down to like you know a handful of candidates, and and uh, then sort of sit down. We'd sit down with Tim and and. Uh, you know, just go through them and, you know, that's, you know, sometimes there's only one choice. You just know it. Right. Um, it's just so great, yeah. all of them. But what you do is you you cast for, like, the, the major characters, and then you use that same talent pool with a lot of the smaller um, characters. Right. And so that's why Kay is, you know, he was cast for Velasco, but then the croupier just was one of those that's like, okay, well, that fits, he works. So you let the actors pretty much kind of come up with their character as well when they look at the picture? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, definitely, like for those secondary characters, they're totally undefined when you're in the studio, and so you just kind of sit there, look at the picture, uh, look at the lines, talk about it, just set a dialogue voice in, and, and, uh, and then go. I just create, oh, I love it. It's just creative everywhere, you know, like through the whole thing. Like not just with us, but even with the actors and right. stuff like that. And you really are like watching a movie. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely. And you really want that relationship between sort of the voiceover director, the actor to be collaborative and allow them the freedom to bring stuff to the table and try things. And um, you know, just it just adds a lot. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember what I need to do next. I know there's something I have to do at the club. Still, I think. I think I'm missing something there. And for him, I think I need to take that coffin shooter or whatever and, and put it in his